A city like any other. Everyone on the move, hustle and bustle. But ponder a while and see what's actually happened. Yes, most of them look supercharged, but in fact, they are merely on their way to work. They start the day with a bang, and soon the Chairborne Army lose themselves in files and books and papers. Exhausting work for the brain, but work that doesn't demand physical exertion. They're at it for eight hours or more every day. Files, books, papers, discussions and counter-arguments. And when it's time to close the files and books and papers, they rise from their chairs looking very much like worn-out rags. Indeed, a tired, listless army of men and women now under charge. A sad but true commentary on life in our city. The office girl returns. Home, sweet home. He's hardly exercised a muscle, but you'd think he's done nothing else all day long. Weary, worn out, it seems the wrong moment to tell him that what he needs is regular daily exercise. But that's the truth. Over the centuries in our country, a number of systems of exercises designed to make the body more fit and better able to bear the stress and strain of everyday life has been evolved. Our Indian exercises are simple in technique and easy to practice. They generally require little time and no accessories and are suitable for all, young and old. The best time for exercise is in the morning, before breakfast. At this time, the vitality of the body is at its highest. All movements can be done with a sense of ease, freshness, vigor, and a great deal of mental calm. Of course, there is nothing like exercise in the open air. If one is compelled to do it indoors, then the room should be properly ventilated and free from draught. Keep the body loosely clothed and exposed to the air as much as possible. Here are a few exercises and movements which will be useful. Breathing can be the starting point because it purifies the air in your lungs. And this is how it should be done. Nostrils should be closed and opened alternately in quick succession, breathing in and breathing out. The stomach should be inflated while inhaling and deflated while exhaling. Blood circulation increases. The body is toned up. Next, feet joined together, throw the head back. Turn the eyes upward. Inhale and exhale deeply feeling the impact on the crown of the head. An exercise for the eyes. Standing in the same position, tilt the face upward. Fix your stare at a point between the eyebrows and hold as long as possible. There is an exercise for the cheeks also. Close your nostrils with your thumb. Inhale deeply through the mouth. Then tilt your head forward. Blow out the cheeks. Hold the breath as long as possible. Repeat four to five times. For the ears, try this exercise. Plug the ears with your thumb. Then with your fingers, close eyes and nostrils. Inhale deeply through the mouth. Tilt the head. Blow out the cheeks. Hold breath as long as possible. Then, holding the head straight, exhale slowly through the nose. Now the neck. While breathing in and out, inflating and deflating the abdomen, stretch the veins of the neck in quick, short jerks. 
Another exercise for the neck. Turn your head vigorously to the left and to the right. Then a backward and forward motion. And finally, rotate the head from left to right. And again from right to left, slowly and forcefully. To develop the shoulders, stand erect, arms pressed to the sides, fists closed, inhale through the mouth, blow out the cheeks, tilt head, hold your breath, move shoulders up and down with force. Now the arms. Stand erect, feet together, Fists closed. Inhale through the nose. Retain breath. Rotate the arms. Exhale. Inhale again. Hold breath. Rotate arms in reverse. To exercise the wrist, hold arms straight in front. Move hands up and down with force. Bend your arms like this in line with your shoulders. Repeat action with force. Repeat the same with closed fists. To develop the chest, inhale through the nose. Raise your arms above your head. Bend the upper part of the body backwards and return to normal position, breathing out. The abdomen. Inhaling through the nose, inflate the stomach fully and hold that position for as long as you can. Then, exhaling, deflate the stomach. A variation. With your hands on your waist, bend forward. Then inflate and deflate the stomach as fast as you can. Another exercise for the muscles of the abdomen, but it requires a lot of practice. If you can do it, it will be very useful. A movement for suppleness and agility. Ladies, pay attention. With the feet joined together and hands held at the back, Bend backwards, inhaling through the nose. Returning to normal position, bend forward as much as possible, exhaling through the nose. Repeat complete process five times. Another variation. Keeping the legs apart, swiftly move the upper part of the trunk to left and right. While swinging the arms, breathe in and out through the nose. Repeat the action ten times. A special exercises for the calves too. With your arms stretched forward, begin inhaling and lower yourself to a sitting position. While getting up, swing your arms in a circular fashion. This should be repeated ten times. And now for the ankles. 
Stand with your feet together. Raise heels up and down while standing on your toes. Do this, if possible, 25 times. Then again, raising your foot about nine inches from the ground, rotate your toes thrice, clockwise and anti-clockwise. Repeat with the other foot. Unique to the Indian system of exercises are the asanas, or composite poses, each designed for exercising particular parts of the body. This is the Ashwat Asana, or people tree pose. Stand upright, raise the arms upwards, and move the right leg sideways at a right angle. Repeat with the other leg. Asana, a pose in the form of an angle. Feet spread out, arm raised, bend as far as you can on either side. No part of the body should bend forward or backward. For suppleness of the body, Padangushta Asana. Get your whole body to rest on your toe like this. Thereafter, hold your waist with both hands. Keep the backbone and trunk upright. Sit motionless with a fixed gaze. Padmasana, the lotus pose. Watch carefully. Place hands on the lap with palms facing upwards, one above the other. The position of the hands can vary, either on the heels of both feet or on the knees. The backbone must be kept straight and both knees must touch the ground. Yes, another exercise for the stomach. Ardhamatsyendra asana. Yes, it's complicated, but practice makes perfect. Paschimottan asana. Now an exercise for the spine and back. Stretch your legs. Catch hold of the toes, crossing your hands. Then bend forward as far as possible. Hold this position as long as you can. Mayur Asana, or the Peacock Pose. Kneel, keeping one cubit distance between the knees. Place your palms on the ground, with fingers stretched out, four inches apart. Join the elbows together at the navel. Slowly lift the feet from the ground. Stretch the legs, balance the body on the elbows, parallel to the ground. Now to help the abdominal muscles. Lying on your stomach, lift up your legs with your hands. Hold them tight and pull them towards you as far as possible. Maintain this position for as long as you can. Bhujang Asana. While lying on your stomach, place your palms near the chest. Raise the body as much as possible. Bend the head back, looking straight ahead. Sarvang Asana. And now a pose for exercising the whole body and improving blood circulation.
Shavasana. To obtain full benefits from your exercise hour, relaxation is essential. Lie on your back with palms of hands turned upwards near the waist. Relax your body to such an extent that you feel detached from your physical self. It's possible if you try. And finally, a pose which helps breathing. Pram. Close one nostril with your hand, breathing in with the other. Then close both nostrils and tilt the head down, holding this position for as long as possible. While exhaling, tilt up the head, keep one nostril closed and breathe through the other. Repeat five times. Breathing exercises should generally precede and follow the day's physical training. These exercises have an advantage. They can be done without unnecessary exertion and without much fatigue. However, they should be practiced only by persons in normal health. Otherwise, proper guidance is necessary. For us, living the intense life of the 20th century, health is a vital commodity. And here is a better way to it.